Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In this master class, my topic is endoscopic reflux injection. And I've been given this topic by Roger. Ms. Pungodi also gave two videos which I will incorporate into the presentation. The presentation for, will be less than half an hour and hopefully at the end, there'll be many Q and A's. What is the indication for deflux? In my view, you can use deflux for any grade of psychoutric reflux, provided it is symptomatic. And by symptomatic, I mean febrile UTI, usually indicating some kind of pyelonephritis. Any grade of reflux can be injected, except that for higher grades, you need to give more deflux and maybe more sessions. Of course, another indication is for patients who cannot uh, comply to taking antibiotics, either a therapeutic course or a prophylactic course. The standard treatment for reflux has always been uh, uretic reimplantation. I use the polytanolate better technique whereby the uretic orifice is dissected and taken out of the bladder and reimplanted higher up, giving a long subcumbicosal length of, of, of about five centimeters and repairing the posterior muscle layer. The success of this operation is at least 80%, even in high-grade reflux. In the lower-grade reflux, the success can be up to 99%. But however, it does require a general anesthetic. And we now know that in patients less than three years old, the repeated or long general anesthesia may affect the cognitive development. Also, in children less than one year old, if there's too much dissection of the trigon, it can have a risk of post-operative voiding dysfunction. Deflux has been approved in the F by the FDA in US since 2001, and it's made from two natural sugars. However, since 2014, there has been a decline in the usage of deflux, especially in Malaysia, because of the cost issue. Now, injection therapy for reflux has been described as the stink or subtrigonal injection. However, actually it is a sub injection and it's injected into the submucosa as such. So this is the schematic diagram showing the stink injection. This is a short video from the Deflux website. The sting procedure is the original deflux injection method. Sting is performed by placing a cystoscope through the urethra into the bladder to guide and properly position the needle directly below the ureteral opening. Once the needle is in place, an injection of the deflux gel is made just under the bladder lining. A mound is formed, narrowing the ureteral opening to stop urine from flowing back up the ureter. With deflux successfully implanted, normal functioning can resume and urine from the kidneys can travel through the ureters and into the bladder without reflux. Kurtz in US modified the sting procedure whereby they actually inject into the ureter, into the ureter, and this is shown in the subsequent video, also from the deflux website. The HIT method is the latest injection technique and is associated with improved success rates. It involves positioning the implant within the ureteral tunnel rather than below the ureteral opening. First, a pressurized stream of fluid is directed into the ureter. This expands the ureteral opening to improve visibility within the ureteral tunnel where the implant is placed. Deflux gel is then injected into the tissue that supports the lining of the ureteral tunnel. The implant raises the floor of the ureter Deflux narrows the ureteral tunnel and stops urine from flowing back up the ureter. So now we have two injection techniques. One is the sting technique and the other one is called the heat technique. In the heat technique, there is also another modification whereby they can inject in two places in the ureter called the double heat technique. So you can have sting which is injection outside the ureteric orifice, 
and the heat, the pro proximal heat and the distal heat. Personally, I am very worried about using the proximal heat because it can give rise to obstruction. But I know that it does improve the, the success rate to reduce reflux. Another way to look at the uretic orifice is using hydro distension. And you can give a description, an endoscopic description of the uretic orifice, depending on how much is distended and what you can see. So it can range from H0 to H3. In H3, you can see the entire intra and extra uretic tunnel. I use a Wolf deflux scope, which is short at French. Uh, which is short 15 centimeter at, at French and, and it actually basically forward viewing uh, of 12 degrees. It allows the passage of a rigid needle, which is five French for the deflux injection. I know some urologists will use a mini scope for urethroscopy, but that may be a bit too long and the channel may not be suitable. Some people ask me, what about this TOS pediatric scope? It has a five French channel, but if you put a five French instrument into a five French channel, it may be a bit too tight. The cost of the flux has gone up many times over the years. I have in my possession a quotation, which was way back in a few years ago, and it was already 3,498 ringgit for one valve. So for high grade reflux, you may have to stand by, if it's bilateral, you have to stand by about five valves, which can amount to quite a lot. Roger informed me that there is a new supplier of a slightly different form, which is from Turkey. And according to the studies they published and put on the website, the results is as good as giving the flux. So I show you a few clinical cases. The first case of mine, which I did in 2007, showing the right uretic orifice, probably this is the H2 before the injection. And this is showing the injection with a needle there's a marker here, which you can inject at six o'clock position. This is about three millimeters submucosa injection. So following the injection, there is a presenteric mount to cause a relative obstruction of the uretic orifice. And you have to keep the needle there for up to 30 seconds so that the reflux is incorporated and won't leak out from the injection orifice. This is a case done by Dr. Pungodi. It's a short video, 30 seconds, showing a sub ureteric or sting procedure. So with the needle in place, the injection is, is done to cause a chrysanthric view of the ureteric orifice. This is the third case which I show this patient has got great fire reflux on the left side. And this is before the injection. This is for the injection of one cc. And I suspect that there's probably still residual reflux. So I attempted to inject another cc, but the uretic orifice is very mobile. So I fix it with a uretic catheter. I injected another cc. And in this particular case, she's quite a big girl. I think she's about 10 years old. I did the on-table cystogram to confirm that there's no more uh, reflux in this particular case. This is a case that was done by Dr. Jack Elder when he came to Kuala Lumpur a few years ago. This patient has got high-grade reflux at the same time as very advanced CKD. So it was the opinion, wise opinion of Jack Elder that we can give a trial of reflux injection. This is the second case from Ms. Pungodi. It's a slightly longer video. You have a look and you can decide whether it is a sting or a hit procedure. So this is the needle actually inside the uretic orifice. So the injection is in progress now. So this hit one or injection into the distal ureteric tunnel.
So this is probably a second CC injected. And the bladder is mildly trapeculated. And there's some bleeding from the injection site. Usually very self-limiting and minor bleeding. I suspect there's still residual reflux in this patient. What is the success? We don't have enough numbers in Malaysia by the urologist to give a result. And this is earlier result from Dr. Puri in Ireland. I think they are, they are the initial uh, champions in injection therapy in reflux, initially with Teflon, but Teflon has been shown to migrate. So in this publication of his, it shows that for patients with high-grade reflux, grade five reflux, which he also injected in big numbers, 166, the resolution is more than half after first injection. But if you give them three injections, if you combine together, the result is well over 80%. So very small risk of failure, 3.6%. This is another study where they look at 337 ureters and they have, they have follow up only in about 100 cases, which shows a one year success. The results are not that good. Of course, it has to be stratified according to the patient. Another important aspect that we must all know that all the reflux will improve with time, especially if it's grade one reflux, even grade, grade four reflux, eventually they, 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 have a, they have an improvement in our time. So we have to factor that in mind when we look at the success rates. This is the publication uh, by Dr. Kirsch, which shows that if you use just the sting procedure, you add on the heat procedure, and then you add on the double heat procedure, the end result of success can be up to 93%. So this is actually a highly successfully successful minimal invasive therapy. Now, if you stratify the results according to this system, whether there are any associated anomalies, whether it's high grade reflux, whether the reflux occurs during the early feeling phase, and also whether it's a male or female, and the anomalies basically refer to paraurethral diverticulum. So this is the scoring system. So high grade reflux in females associated with congenital abnormalities and early reflux indicates a very poor uh, prognosis, higher risk. So the patient must be aware of this success rate. In a series published by Jack Elder in 2006, it shows that the success decreases with the higher grade of reflux. And another publication, also from the J Euro, it shows that, in fact, actually, even para urethral diverticulum can have a high success rate of, refl of, of, of success in the treatment. The main complication that urologists fear is that of obstruction, which is less than 1%. And if there's obstruction after the flux injection, you can treat it with a nephrostomy, percutaneous nephrostomy. You can treat it with a stand and you plan the patient for early surgery. I brought this slide from Ms. Pungodi where she lists the high risk cases for deflux injection, namely paraurethral diverticulum, mega ureters, ectopic ureters, urethral duplication, neuropathic bladders, and last but not least, patients with bladder bowel dysfunction, and especially if they already have renal scarring. Now, the, the most feared complication is that, of course, post-operative, the patient has pain, loin pain, and severe fever. So we try not to inject too much and try to have a pre-operative pre -operative urine culture so that if patient has infection, then you know what antibody to give to the patient. Of course, if they have to go back to theater for stenting, uh, then the cost increases significantly. Now, in the follow-up, I mentioned just now that one case I did an on-table, uh, cystogram, but generally speaking, patients and parents do not like to have radiation. So you can follow them patient up clinically 
especially if they're very frail UTI, we know that they can recur, up to 20% can recur. To me, the most important follow-up is mm -hmm. ultrasound. This do not migrate. Do not migrate. They do not migrate, okay? They do not migrate. Uh, and if you do an ultrasound, there will be uh, echogenic. And if the radiologist doesn't know, they think that you have created a stone for the patient. Now, I need to upgrade a little bit about ultrasound because I think ultrasound is the way forward for imaging in children. And it's not just a simple ultrasound. The ultrasound, you have to look very carefully at the kidney, the, the bipolar length, the AP diameter, look at the parenchymal thickness, look for scars, look at the ureter. Of course, an ultrasound, you may not be able to see the middle ureter, but just the upper and lower ureter. Look at the bladder, look for the bladder volume, bladder wall thickness, the posterior ureter, and the postmaturation volume. Reflux can be reduced by injection, but the patient will still need to be on antibiotics as important for the attending pediatrician or the system that the patient must have immediate antibiotics and for at least five days if they have another infection. And some of them may continue to have prophylactic antibiotic, especially if the reflux is not completely cured. Uh, it's no longer the standard practice that all patients with reflux will be on continuous antibiotics until the age of five. So anti-reflux surgery reduces the risk of febrile UPI, but it does not reverse renal scarring. It does not reverse pyelonephritis. Pyl it does not reverse renal impairment. And even in Malaysia, we have about 4% of patients on our national renal registry, patients who have renal impairment with reflux. And of course, if the patient is a higher risk for hypertension, either from previous infection or from, from congenital renal scarring or dysplasia, this will not be reversed by the injection therapy. So this is important in the counseling with, with the patient. People may say, why do you compare the flux with Reimplantation, either open laparoscopic or robotic. But I think there's no real comparison because injection is a minimally invasive procedure. So, my final slide take home message is that you can give reflux injection to any patient with any grade of reflux so long as they have symptomatic UTI. It's minimally invasive, it can be done as a day case, but you do require a special pediatric scope with a straight instrument channel that can easily emit a five French rigid needle injector. And of course, cost is the main concern. Thank you for your attention.